All right, here we go. Going into the game two draft. We've swapped sides. Weibo Gaming is going to be on blue side. We've got Jarvan going into Nico, Azir, Rumble, Zaya on blue side, and then Oriana saying we don't want to go for this juggle of Rakan threat and whether or not we want to do it. We just want it off the board. They end up picking Maokai for themselves first. This has been a blue one or ban at every single stage, I think. Uh, maybe like 96% present in, in Worlds so far. Answered by... Callista Cassante, they give over Aphelios and Renata, so we're very much going into a Siege-style composition. We'll have big ultimate synergy with Maokai and Renata moving together, especially the most common way to defend against Maokai is to stand in a row while Renata ult can just peel straight through that, force you guys all to fight each other. Uh, so we'll see whether or not they get that play off. The final pick in the first stage is Syndra, <clears throat> kind of maligned champion, very difficult to make work on this stage when people are looking for it. Hopefully we don't see the same bad build that we have seen uh, previously multiple times, unfortunately. Second round of bands, we have Nautilus Vi and Akali Poppy. We have R4 Rel, which was a flex pick. They they could juggle into a couple different matchups. We end up with Talia and Nar, meaning that we've got <clears throat> Maokai Jungle, Nar Top, and Talia there, happy to take Nar into Cassante, and we end up, they were jiggling between Alistar, Ivern, and then they swapped at the last second for Lee Sin. So good job kind of like baiting whether or not it's going to be support or, or carry, or sorry, support or jungler, and then going for Lee Sin in the end. Uh, Lee Sin might have a little bit of a tricky time, especially since this is a five ranged uh, composition. There's really no window to get in. It's also going to be fairly miserable for Callista and even for Syndra, like where do you ever find the window to go in against this team when they all outrange you, right? The, the only person that has any amount of range here is Syndra. And then you're talking about ward hops, Q2s, flat, you know, insects to try to pull someone back into your team. Uh, but normally teams that outrange have a very easy time in sieging. So we'll see if that happens in the game. All right, before we get into the game, I want to take a moment to say thank you. All right, you guys are being awesome as supporters of the channel. We have almost a thousand new subscribers. So when we hit that mark, we're going to be doing a giveaway at the Academy, 10 hours. You can use it however you want, whether or not you want macro, micro, performance psychology, or whether or not you want to give it away to friends. You can work with your clash team, whatever you want. We're here for you. All you need to do is like, subscribe, and comment on one of the videos at Worlds. And anyone who's done that over the course of this entire tournament will be entered for the sweepstakes so again, thank you so much. Let's get on the game. All right, on the rift. Maokai stepping out. We'll see what kind of path we get. A lot of times with Maokais in the game, we end up with a battle for Raptor camps, right? This champion can basically two-shot two different cues to kill this camp by himself. Uh, that means that it opens up a lot of different patterns for being aggressive with second clears or by going seven or eight camps before getting your recall. It allows you to get that early bomby cinder <clears throat> to start having that extra effect. Uh, when they don't get it, they tend to go for the giant's belt instead and just start building into demonic embrace. This game where they have a sieging setup, I wouldn't be surprised to see an early radiant virtue to make sure that you do have that one tankiest person on your team so that they don't just walk all over you in the fights. Uh, but I expect to see Demonic Embrace next. We'll see what Wei Wei decides to do. Syndra Lee Sin, classic combination, scatter the weak into Q1 Resonating Strike. Q2 from Lee Sin should spell the death of Talia if they ever get it off. You can use the rocks in response. If you realize that you're getting hit by the scatter of the weak, you can throw your E in the direction of the Lee Sin. At least when he Q2s you, he'll be stunned. He won't be able to uh, flash kick you over. You'll be able to escape. Uh, or, you know, even if you get that much damage, you can just walk, maybe walk away. But it is very difficult to do. Obviously, Humanoid's going to be fishing, trying to get as many of these off as possible. Here we go. We see the early start. Lee Sin going for his own Raptor clear. Now, interesting here for Maokai, all right, starting blue buff instead means that you're not going to have any rebounded camps. You're not going to have any second spawns in time. Uh, probably for the best because if they both go top to bottom or let's say you have raptors start and then you try to do some sort of path that brings you back to finish the raptors as they respawn at 350 well if lee sin does a top to bottom gets bottom scuttle he'll actually be able to fight you for that and he'll go for that respawn so you have to be very cognizant of what is the jungle matchup who's going to be who's playing where's the strength uh, and whether or not you can continue those raptor spawns for yourself now two different options that we have here from Lee Sin. He can either take this three or four camp and turn it into bot pressure, 
or he can just cycle back having taken these two camps then he can come back start doing these and end up on the top side sometimes you'll go and just match whatever the other jungler is doing so you can get those fights that you're looking for as the lee sin now aphelios getting pushed we see this pretty often uh pretty surprised that we did, didn't just see an immediate all-in from from callista rel right they definitely have the tools to just go for chase but they didn't have information on malachi's start so they did not get it would have preferred especially when you have callista on your team that you try to set up vertical jungling so far this tournament it has all been about full clears and and adaptations to take advantage of full clears and just that there has not been many uh if any aggressive pass here we go one of the first ones of the tournament a 313 tamp uh gank timer we have e flash to guarantee the landing they're going to pass it to Callista. noah's going to get first blood a big prize for fanatic however they did hemorrhage some cs under turret they weren't able to get that they were succumbing to the range advantage right there as we were saying like this lane you basically play for the all-ins it's all about the all-ins if you go in and you try to lean normally you're going to die to poke especially every time that renata and aphelios each tag you you're going to get that huge extra source of damage from her uh whatever it's called business partners passive um just doing that extra damage on hit but if you play for the all-ins you should you should be able to go and just win this fight on the base guns they end up with a q flash to move forward into w to get the second knock up look at this e flash from uh lee sin wait till it's impossible right that q make sure that if you're going to miss you miss long forcing them back into your carry could have even played that more aggressively going for for more damage onto light as well but chris biting the dust he's happy to do that it leaves aphelios in the lane and uh has a 13 CS lead for himself. You know, this wave will be coming back. Costa will get some of it, but it's going to actually be very difficult to take this under turret because this is against two ranged champions. You see that Rel actually has to work all the way around to get there. And you have two ranged champions that are going to be poking under the turret. We're going to see if Aphelios and Renata are actually able to get a plate for themselves uh, with that advantage. You know, they already have the one. Will they go for a second? They definitely need to find out about Lee Sin before they do anything. Weiwei takes top scuttle, realizes that he's not being contested for it, which means Lee Sin has very limited places where he might be. One of those places could be bottom, and that's why you see the bot laners back off. Even though they have the winning position there, they don't want to deal with Hex Flash and the potential for Lee Sin to be jumping over a wall. Now, this ward right here, it looks like it's not actually perfectly placed. This ward, you want to be very greedy and put it right on the edge of the bush so that Lee Sin can actually treat it like a ward hop. The fact that they put it that far out, I don't think he can actually get to that. It's going to be less than a Teemo frame away, so it's going to be very close no matter how you cut it. But um, but either way, you want to make sure you're playing. I, I highly doubt that Leeson can jump this. I'm fairly certain that he can't. Correct. Leeson opts to keep his smite. They take out the dragon by himself, realizing that there's no threat from Maokai. <clears throat> no threat of jumping over the wall, no dashes to speak of. And ever since the changes, you're not seeing the blast cones here spawn until nine minutes. So there's not even going to be a path over the wall. Uh, so very predictable to see what Malcolm might do. Look at the control words that we have lining this area. We have one defensive one. This means Lee Sin is going to be able to bob and weave, get in and out of vision in this area. Or I should say in and out of threat range while never being in vision. It means that he can even go around, hug this wall and get himself a nice spot to pre prevent this gank if Maokai goes for it. Now Maokai, realizing that Lee Sin is in the vicinity and that they have a pushing wave, he's gonna go try to tuck himself into these uh, into these bushes, right? You go, you hide in the bush, you get your team to push, you're double ranged into melee all in, so the threat is definitely there where the Rel can go after you. Now that Lee Sin's on the map, I absolutely expect him to go back over there. No, he can't do it. Maybe he was spotted by the Callista Sentinel. This feels like a miss by Weiwei. Would have absolutely preferred to see him go forward there, step in. You've got this situation where your team does lose this all in 2v2. Maybe the fact that Leeson is topside uh, is going to convince Fnatic to not go for it. But if they if they had perfect information here, they'd absolutely be going for this fight. Maybe not now with Maokai stepping back into range. But here he goes. He hovers, he recalls in position. You see that they're very uncertain about it. Noah th sending out the Sentinel. Hidden power tucked into this champion is how well you're able to protect yourself in these siege spots and not hemorrhage health to the higher range duo right they're going up they can hit you you can't hit them if you do get into an all-in it will absolutely favor you 
but you need to make sure that you're not going for it unless you're positive that you're going to win. All right, here we go. Flash RE from Syndra. We have E flat. Oh my goodness. Beautiful mechanics there. <clears throat> so we had the flash ultimate to be able to hit them. Scatters multiple balls around. Then when the cone comes from scatter of the week, you guarantee yourself a stun. Then you go into Lee Sin's E flash to make sure that that lands. He's able to kick away dragon's kick and then Q1, Q2. So using all of uh, both flashes to ensure that they get the combo off. This is something that we were talking about. Like this combo, very, very nice. We see how potent it is one into the other. You can get those big stuns, never having to miss. Hold on. Wait, why did you ultimate there? That seemed very bizarre. That looked like a little bit of a panic ult there. Uh, so now that tool is gone. That's a, that's a pretty big deal. The fact that he walked up, gut chunked that much, used the ultimate to no avail. Uh, thought that maybe he was going to need it for the self peel, but normally you, you need to wait for the cooldowns to go out. You need your support to actually cast their spells only after they cast their spells and they've taken some amount of threat. That's when you want to vacuum them into the death realm. Girl's going to pull the wave. You see how she draws the aggro. Never lets the minions touch the turret. Once they touch the turret, they will continue to hit the turret. So Rel's able to pull it out and preserve this a little bit for the Callista, which is very important because we see we have a significant CS gap. This is worth the difference in the kill right now. Average value of a CS is about 20 gold, right? So every 20, you're talking about 400. That's, that's like first blood gold right there. We see Infamous, the Shy, <clears throat> notorious for being able to carry these games. Player gapping. Here we go. Flash. It was actually QR to make sure that they had another one down and then the flash forward to get the kick. Kick into Q1, Q2 to make sure that's going to hit. Nicely done. Good combo. But Nard's, Nard's taking it to the Cassante right now. Cassante is holding out as much as he can. We'll see whether or not he goes for uh, the plate mail. Plate mail is the best source of resistance that actually keeps you the healthiest against long range champions that are trying to poke you, poke you down. Uh, it doesn't build into his immediate spike, but Frozen Heart is a fantastic item for him. Uh, I don't expect him to go for plate mail, but it's definitely on the table. They usually will go chain mail sheen. Sheen to make sure that you're dealing something back also helps you with the last hits under turret. This matchup where you get shoved in and then chain mail obviously to start building into Iceborne. Right, here we go, Maokai, covering again. This time opting to cover here, wants to play around the fact that there might be wards in those bottom bushes. So actually hugs the walls to make sure that you have that different angle. They already have this one there. So that's a way of playing around the potential vision in a different angle. They opt to stay here. It's gonna be long enough to get the Herald. Now this long range matchup, this is one where they're winning. Normally I do want the Rift Herald in the bot lane and I do want to give it to my carry so that he gets all the gold. But this stage, like, this long lane is benefiting you. You almost don't want this lane to drop. The same can be said about Nar, right? Ooh, nice spacing by Oscarinian trying to get that in. The Shy trying to use the Nar ultimate. Something that, like we see at this level, you just need to use them and try to get maximum currency out of all of your spells. And each recall, if you know, like it has a fairly short recall or a very, fairly short cooldown you'll have it up for the next fight anyways might as well go try to get a big chunk of damage helps you also push the wave very quickly uh, so they're able to get that benefit for themselves and he's just going to come back to lane do it normally and uh, as we as we predicted we saw triforce here he's in a position to try to carry via split pushing and potentially take the game over uh, in that way and we'll see whether or not the side lane pressure becomes enough we haven't seen any dedicated split push for win uh, full disengage that said we do have Maokai that can disengage Talia that can put the wall up we have Renata that's very good at it hold on we'll look at the fight this is the use that you want Trimby steps forward it can soak up the damage you get ultimate for ultimate now you might look for a, a re-engage here but now there's enough time for Lee Sin to get down in the bot lane now this might this might be a game for hope group with Holebreaker strat if you're if you're the Nar, you can put so much pressure on the Cassante with an item like Hullbreaker. There's no one on the enemy team that can that can fight you for waves. Syndra can't beat the Hullbreaker. 
Isante can't beat you and he can't clear waves if there's a hull breaker present. Uh, so we might see a game where we see something like Triforce into Black Cleaver into hull breaker be a significant split pushing threat and then then and only then teleporting into fights when you have 70% of your rage bar active. All right, Lee Sin's hovering for the Syndra. Potentially trying to get another one of those plays off. We see Gnar just bullying Cassante right now. Not even close. Using Fleet Footwork to reposition, also to heal himself up, making sure that he can just do these trades completely one-sided. Do have an ultimate coming up in about five seconds for, for the Maokai. See whether or not he goes for a play here. Lee Sin is in the vicinity. He will be able to peel off the play, but he has to start looking at the, op the options of the shy diving Cassante right here. Probably not going to happen in the face of All Out, but he can absolutely go look to use his ultimate, clear the wave, and either roam, or he can come over and roam with the ultimate and try to make a play with the Weaver's Wall. Nar very classically pa paired together here. So you send this ultimate forward while you send this ultimate to cross them off. You force the fight to happen in a small area. That means that they can't kite away from the Maokai. And then when they are corralled against the corner, that's when you put the Nar ultimate up against them. Oh, Q Flash being ju juked out. Blista going in. They're going to try to get this kill, but Trimby is going to get one traded back. So all is not lost for the Aphelios. Nar does come down. This is actually going to be where you want them to end up. The plates are down anyway, so having Nar already down here, A, it stops them from dealing any more damage to the plate. It also puts your strongest champion into this matchup where Kalista does, does not have any resources left. Hold on, we're going to see Chain CC. Humanoid, ooh, getting wrong with the flash there. Needs to use the flash to try to get over the tendrils. Sometimes can be a very difficult spell to move because it moves so slowly that it almost throws off your timing compared to something like an Azir wall. Where it's like they hit it, okay, take a breath and then go. This one you actually have to like pause, walk, step towards it, and then you can try to flash over it. But Nar in the in the bottom lane, uh, they actually do move Aphelios over. This is fairly surprising. Uh, perhaps expected actually with the Rift Herald coming up. This is the type of fight you want. But he was not able to ever get that auto attack off. The fact that he dodged the Q flash was so big for being able to get there, get in position for the fight. <clears throat> Just he, he's going to regret casting that flash for sure. So they send Aphelios to the top lane. You do this because you're expecting to have pressure here for the, for the Herald. You don't necessarily need to come mid in this short versus short, but here we go. We're, we're walling off. And, oh, he left an avenue for them to get through. Means they jump through and they're able to pull out the other. So they get the Herald for themselves. There's, there's no way no anyone jumps for this. They might try to pick a fight, actually. With Syndra over here on this side of the map, they might try to go for something. They're using this ward, all right? So clearly Vision up behind. I'm surprised he didn't go for the E there. You E to slow the Callista, and then if Callista ever jumps, they get stunned, and then you can get the, the hit anyways. So you get the best of one world or another. Here we go. Kick Q2 lands, goes for a uh, kick flash to pull Talia back to the team. So many of the ultimates were down, realizing that they had a window to go in and be aggressive. Razor kind of playing out of his mind in this series so far. Syndra opting not to cast her ultimate there? Huh? Wasn't that guy just dead? Would have been very, very close. Aphelios with no with no tools to get away. Flash and cleanse are gone are gone. I'm very surprised that she didn't go for ultimate and then go up with the soul already active to go for a Q. Try to execute him right there. If for no other reason than to try to just get him all the way dead or all the way to like 10% where he feels like he can't lane. Instead, he's feeling fairly comfortable coming back up into the lane, fleet footwork, red gun, overheal, probably legend bloodline as well. Uh, feeling fairly comfortable to just heal tank their way back up slowly but surely. And the fact that Aphelios is up in the top lane means Leeson has the inside track. However, they do not want to play against this Gnar. Uh, especially with Syndra not having teleport. So she's actually moving her way over, but she's going to get there at the same time as Renata and Aphelios. So the dragon being pulled to the side means that they will have the opportunity to take this. No punish. Malachi and Talia ultimates are still down, so there's no contestation here.
you two kick flash kick flash not only getting that first kill but turning it into uh chain cc but also bowling right whenever you can bowl that that ability gets extra extra effect the fact that you get those knockups the sucking them in into double Q w landing Maokai ultimate goes down in vain nar trying to get a big chunk of damage but this is this is not part of an engage maybe it is he's saying i've got a big chunk hey guys come over here we can go take the skill crispy using the q2 half of handshake to hold them in place for as long as possible and then you throw if you grab them and throw them right away you're sort of giving away extra time that you have in the cc window you want to take it catch them hold your breath 1001 and then throw generate a little bit of extra time for your for your team to deal extra damage if that opportunity arises All right, unfortunately, we see the build that we hate so much from Syndra. Merc Treads into Leandris. <clears throat> you will have some more value in this game with, with Maokai Nar. That can be fairly heavy, you know, standing in the front of the fight. But as we said, if, if you're fishing, it's not about the amount of fishing attempts. It's about the quality of the reel in when you do get it. Right? And if you're using QE, it's not about getting an extra one per 45 seconds. Right? It's going to be about whether or not the one that you hit counts. And in those situations, I will take Sork Shoes, Ludens over, over Merc Treads and, and Leandries every time. Now, I see the, the appeal of the Merc Treads in this case, right? You're talking about Renata, Talia, Maokai. Everyone that could be in your lane is dealing magic damage and you have CC. And specifically, you have two different routes in the form of Maokai. So you want to be able to do more. Jahu being picked on once again. Let's see, are they going to tank? Yeah, Rel's going to tank for Noah. You flash out, and then you pull back Trimby to safety once again. So very nicely done, where Rel's willing to go in, use her stats, use her shield, peel for the team, use put her spells on cooldown, and then use Callista to bail them out. Now, if we both going to win this, how are they going to do it? Well... <clears throat> Nar for one is huge. I'm actually very surprised that he went for Sterics. Uh, very much oriented around the team fight, but Black Cleaver would have done a ton of work in the side lane, uh, especially fighting over this Cassante. We haven't seen that many Black Cleavers second. And you'd also be shredding while you're chain CCing, you'd be shredding for the Aphelios to be able to deal maximum damage with his spells to start off. All right, we have a very fast Baron here. They're going right on spawn. They're saying, we're over here. Cassante's not in position, might not even have items for the recall themselves. Is teleporting into the fight. They get the heads up. Razor goes into the pit. This might be a little bit aggressive based on where everyone else is positioned. Pause for a second, all right? Look at the positions as we come in. Razor's trying to hold the aggro. Now, Oscarinian has a difficult choice. Am I going to tank for the Lee Sin and hold on to this, or am I going to tank for my team? Right now, he's doing neither. All right, he's in this awkward position between those two spots, so he's not blocking threat this way, and he's not blocking threat this way. You absolutely need to get yourself more forward, try to hold this position. Lee Sin is strong enough with enough shields, and he has the Gore Drinker, so he should be happy to just tank this for himself. Also, nobody has been able to take this out, which means enemy team has vision here, and you may not as the fight breaks out. We look at all the other positions too. Renata giving herself a nice clear angle to throw a big ultimate through this fight if it does come forward that's what Cassante needs to be careful if he does go this way he needs to be willing to go even further and then Trimby's gonna have to step to the side let the ult pass and then re-engage over the top Noah and and in general talking about the range threat of this entire comp the fact that we have the Leandries and, and Merc Treads means Syndra's not really that big of a threat right now like she can combo but it's only gonna get somebody down like not even the tanks it's only gonna get someone like Jahu down like this much Right, you're still going to need follow-up, and Noah's not in a position to be able to do that. This His attack range is about right here. He needs to be able to get inside, so we're going to have to force our way forward in the fight. Uh, or be willing, you know, get them, commit to having their team step in so you can actually take this. And then maybe we're looking at an all-out versus Maokai. Uh, Kasante can mark this target right here and try to throw him out of the pit as they go for a split. That'll probably start happening once we're at 20, 2400 HP on the Baron. But this uh this is the big thing to highlight. Just the threat range. The fact that we don't have two of these ultimates. They had inside track. They've got better vision. This is going to favor Weibo gaming, but it will come down to an element of execution. How are they able to progress? 
we step forward, we see Oscar Ingen going straight forward, flash into W, getting as much damage up in front, but it's a little bit early. You see how Baron's still sitting over 4,000 HP? That's not enough threat, right? Now they, they're not worried about losing the Baron in the midst of this. Plus, they're hitting all your champions. Razorg is still busy going after the Baron himself, and it's just too, it's too much to go, right? You have to peel back out. It's way too early. Trimby ends up biting the dusk. Oscar Ingen's gonna go for a next setup. Humanoid's going to get this big stun. Handshake throwing them, raking them over the coals quite literally. And uh, Weibo just blows that fight up. And you see the importance of structure and positioning, right? What is your team's objective going into the draft? Where are the item spikes going to matter? How are they going to matter, right? In this case, if you spend money on Merc Treads and, and Leandries, you're just not a threat in that stage and your team needs to play like you're not a threat. Fnatic's going to want this one back for sure, and especially this window right here. The fact that he's got Q3 charged up, he's feeling pretty happy, right? But this is the problem. 4,200 HP on the Baron. And this, right, this is not nearly close enough. 2,400 and less, then you're starting to talk about potentially being able to kill it. But Callista also doesn't even have a single spear thrown in this. You'd almost be willing to throw the Q and just jump into the pit right here if you were Callista, and then try to dance around the back of the pit to dodge spells. Uh, using the Baron as a pivot to kind of move around if you need to. But again, the short-range disadvantage uh, comes into full effect right here. Maokai actually going forward. This might be something they they probably didn't want this. Maokai going on to, on to Kasante. The call is, hey, we can go for the one-shot on him, but he's still in full tank mode. He hasn't even gone all out. They end up canceling for Trimby instead. If Maokai had come to the back line instead, we'd be talking about throwing these carries in. This would have been an even bigger blowout. So... Uh, it was that bad where even Weibo not getting perfect execution in the fight still crushes it. And look at this. This is meaning. This damage is nothing. Cinder gets multiple rotations off and no one bats an eye. Cinder has a very, very bad win rate at Worlds right now. I believe the majority of her wins came in in play-ins as well. So it's not even not even close once we're getting into better competition. This takes her too long. And this build that everyone's been going, I just think is is poor meta. All right, we're gonna see a range disadvantage coming out again. Not just that, but they have a 6k gold lead for themselves. Now they have multiple options. Weibo drawing this line of scrimmage is gonna be fantastic for them because now they have the opportunity to push or siege. Aphelios, you see, is touching the wave. As they're holding the line of scrimmage, 10,000 health on the dragon means there's not much window. Now, they're probably marking Lee Sin, saying, hey, he's not here. What kind of window is he going to take to jump over? Ops to go this way. That's kind of crazy. All right, you have to jump into the pit, sir. That Q is shorted. <clears throat> Weaver's wall is down. It's meant as a stall tactic. Aphelius did rejoin the fight, actually. Baron is resetting. So all this is turning into permanent damage over here, and there's no threat. If Weaver were to win a fight, they could win the game here. Whereas if Fnatic wins a fight, they're just going to reset all the waves. Oh, we still see this front to back. Jahu Lee Sin finally jumps in. Let's see if he gets Q1. He has his flash available. So if he can go and, for example, use Q onto Crisp, I would prefer that he just completely lose focus of the dragon, give the dragon to them, and go for the back line. Instead, he does not. So we go front to back here. Callista is held in check there by the Berserk. Long enough, even through the cleanse, they're able to get the follow-up CC. And humanoid, you're uh, you're not doing anything. Good little move by Chris. Brazor trying to survive. I'm not actually sure that this is even better. Might have been better to just go int down here, right? Like get them to go chase you down in the depths of the map as far away from the inhibitors as possible. And dying quickly can actually be a benefit too, right? Because you want to get back on the map. What you don't want is what we have right here where we have syncopated, boom, boom, boom. Like three people are coming up. That's not enough to defend with. And then the next one's coming up. That's still not enough to defend with. Lisa needs to use this window right here to hit crisp. Use, use that as a conduit, right? You should have been Q1, Q2, then kick flash on light. Try to put light into the rest of the team. What happened to that cleanse? Did cleanse not hit... It was bizarre. Sometimes a little bit of a spectator bug. Looked like the full value of Berserk was, was going off.
you know, it's neat dancing around like this. But enemy team's looking to recall anyways, turn their lead into, into the actual inventories, move it from their wallet to the inventory. <clears throat> By dying, now you just have a staggered death. Makes it very easy for them to get that. We've got two items here, including a Knight's Vow, Thornmail picked up by the Gnar. So very much trying to get in the middle of this fight, hold people down. Uh, the armor producing a lot of value here. Randuin's Omen, not that good since we have a Rageblade carry in the form of Callista. So preferring to go for Thornmail for the extra effect as well, especially since we have Blade of the Rune King, right? War Drinker plus the second safeguard, second half of Leeson's W. Cassante all out. Plenty of sources for the Thornmail to mitigate. Still no Black Cleaver. Makes it very clear that the intent is I'm going to team fight. We're going to play around the peel of Renata and Aphelios and just win these fights this way. Uh, I believe we've seen this matchup several times, and this is how it's gone if, literally every single time. You can have Callista. We'll pick up Aphelios and we'll play, we'll play front to back, peel, make sure that Callista doesn't have an avenue. And people just haven't been taking advantage of the lane phase, right? You have to be so super aggressive with this combination. And we saw that they never did it. There's one flash forward that resulted in a flash backwards, and that was it while they were alone. So clearly not playing uh, this champion as it's intended. You want that full power strength. You want to be able to go forward. You get a mark on a minion that's at about a quarter health. Then you start diving forward. Uh, you get the first rent stack. You reset it by casting E. It will kill the minion and slow them. That allows you to go back and continue hitting more now that they're slower, and you allow Trimby to get your continuation CC. Instead, they've got nothing of that. So we've got a three-level advantage, one-level advantage, one-level, one here, two here, just a tremendous lead. We're talking about like a full completed item in stats alone, right? Like that extra, what is that? Seven, eight, eight extra levels. So we're talking about 800 HP, something like 25 AD, probably 20 resistances, right? This is basically like buying, like buying a full tank item. That is how far ahead they are. On top of the attack speed as well, like, you know, and the extra ranks in the spells. So just a huge, huge lead for Weibo, uh, plus the fact that they have 11k all in the inventory. They're trying to stack the Shy up. Unfortunately, this Weaver's Wall, a little bit short. You also want to do that as you're hitting Rage, right? Probably 50% uh, of the Rage Bar needs to be full before you're happy about going for that angle it was a little bit short two ultimates down means that we do have a position of strength here for fanatic my goodness the green white guns just ripping through lee sin you see the trickling effect right it seems like the damage is done and then it just keeps on going keeps on going it's like a dot 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 to fight renata with a beautiful angle there of getting the peel ease ease away goes to safety but uh this low range comp just has no play against the outrange of weibo now here's what we want, the shot, you see that 70% rage, completely different story, is able to get immediately rage out. <clears throat> actually, I think he actually raged and then teleported. But that's the difference between getting into one of these fights with Mega Nar, completely different champion. Now how are they going to opt to end? They've got the inhibitor broken, so checkmate is in hand. They're probably just going to walk back and go take this dragon. Fnatic can try to trade and go for this, uh, sorry, I said dragon. Weibo's going to go back and collect Baron. Fnatic can try to exchange it for dragon. They have very low damage, though, because Callista is staying in the base. Normally, you want that opposite. You want Syndra to be the one clearing waves and, and the AD carry off and clearing the objectives. Look at the range on that, guys. That's insane. The attempt for a little bit trade off. They're trying to get Nar, hopefully, hoping that he's in mini Nar, but he does teleport in with Mega. They do get one kill back for themselves, but limping away from the rest of the fight. <clears throat> now they trade the dragon for the Baron. All right, you can count that as a, a small win in that little small window, <clears throat> but you've got the super barreling in. You're going to see one person go in mid and four go in bottom. Most likely it's going to be Talia so that she can cut off the angle. During the siege, you may see Maokai hiding in between. They're going to wedge themselves into this quadrant. Maokai is going to start littering the area with his saplings. 
and then you're going to create this uh just whittle away just lean on them it's just lean on them a little bit more get the wave pushing in slightly looks like they opt for the shy to do it instead now you can do this and have maokai part of the sieging crew have uh talia here threatening for this angle but of course you want nar in position when the weaver's wall does come out all of those abilities are up but nar is also super super strong to stand by himself Ends up going mega, which is not something that he wanted here. Now watch them hold on to this push. They slow it down. Ideally, you want to wait, wait, wait for as long as possible and let the super into the base. Now the super's into the base, so we have pretty good timing here. Razor is separated from his team. We'll call this peeling for two, which means that they should absolutely go to all in right here against light. But they're incapable of dealing any damage because they are so outranged. Guys, speed and range are the two best stats in the game always. All right, that is how you determine scaling, whether or not you'll be able to hit them without them hitting you is such a big indicator of who's going to be able to win these games. Weibo had that in spades this game, which means that they take game two and we're off to do or die. Game three.